if you're tired of hearing about the Canon EOS R1 and the EOS R5 Mark II, then you're going to like this story. According to Canon rumors, Canon might be releasing a new APS-C camera in 2024. A solid source has let us know that there have been hints about a follow-up of 2022's Canon EOS R7, which is a fine camera, but in our opinion, the follow-up should go slightly upmarket. We think the stacked sensor future at Canon should definitely have an APS-C entry. And that's all we know for the specifications of this new APS-C camera. Now, it isn't 100% known that it's an R7 Mark II, but being released a couple of years ago, there's a lot of people that would like to see some improvements. First of all, let's take a look at the specifications of the Mark I. And that first thing that Canon Rumors talked about is a stacked sensor. And we can see that the Mark I has a 32.5 megapixel APS-C sensor. Increasing that to a stack sensor would solve some of the critics of the Mark I. And one of those being dynamic range, but also helping with speed and performance as well. Reducing any sort of rolling shutter. That would be really beneficial and helpful to this camera. And I would love to see that too. I think the price point of this camera being Canon's flagship APS-C camera, well, would benefit from this. It would help in low light situations. And if you're shooting wildlife at noon, you're gonna get a great shot. But if you're shooting in dawn or dusk, well, that's where a stacked sensor really comes in. And that's all we know about this camera. We don't know an awful lot about it. In fact, there's no guarantee that it is an R7 Mark II. We are getting an APS-C sensor and they got hints that it might be the R7 Mark II. And this certainly makes an awful lot of sense. It was released back in the middle of 2022, and it's a very good follow-up to the 70 Mark II, but there are some, I wouldn't say issues, there are some things that Canon could definitely do to improve upon it. Taking a look at the back of the camera, the Mark I, you know what I'm talking about. That rear control wheel definitely needs to be updated. It feels cheap. It feels like it would be something on the Canon EOS R100, not the R7. Let's go ahead and give them the same rear control wheel found in the R6 Mark II, the R5. It's only gonna cost them an extra 10 cents anyways. But obviously that rear control wheel isn't the only thing we'd like to see improved. Now let's take a look at the specifications of the Mark I and then we can predict where Canon could go with the R7 Mark II, if that is the camera that we're getting. And that's a big if here, but uh, more on that later. So taking a look at the specifications, we can see that the Mark I has a pretty good resolution. 32.5 megapixels, APS-C sensor. However, putting in a stacked sensor, as Canon Rumor suggests, would make an awful lot of sense to this camera. Most people buying this camera are shooting wildlife, they're shooting outdoors. And if you're shooting birds in the middle of the day, you're gonna get plenty of light coming into that camera. You're not gonna to have to worry about anything and the rolling shutter is pretty limited. But a stacked sensor would not only further eliminate any rolling shutter, which is really handy when shooting birds, especially if you're shooting in electronic mode. But the other thing that would be really huge here is about a stack sensor is if you're not shooting in the middle of the day. In fact, if you're shooting in dawn or dusk, and that's where a stack sensor really comes in, in those low light situations. So I agree with Canon rumors. I think get, putting a stack sensor in this flagship APS-C camera from Canon, um, would be well worth it, even if they raise the price $100 or $200. And right now the camera's currently on sale $100 off, but I think putting a stack sensor in this camera would be huge, absolutely huge. The autofocus system would definitely get updates, improving it, bringing it up to where it is in the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, and most likely taking a lot of the improvements that are gonna be seen in the Canon EOS R1 and the R5 Mark II into this camera as well. And the video specifications, 4K, 60 frames per second, 10-bit 422, HDRPQ, and Canon Log 3, that's great. But the one thing I'd really like to see in this camera is higher frame rates. And yes, 4K 120 or even 150, 180 frames per second. The thing about shooting wildlife is sometimes you want to capture those moments where things are moving very, very fast. I'm not talking about a snail. I'm not talking about one of those morning doves, but there are other animals. Um, hummingbirds and birds that are moving very, very fast. And if you're interested in capturing video clips, having high speed would definitely be an improvement. Now I'm not looking for a bump in resolution to 40 megapixels and, be, and to be able to shoot 8K video UHD, but definitely increasing some of those slow-mo speeds, 
would be very, very handy indeed. The R7 is no slouch at 30 frames per second electronic or 15 frames per second mechanical. While Canon could definitely improve the frame rate to 40 frames per second, the same as the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, I don't think there's a lot of call for that. 30 frames per second is more than fast enough with a stack sensor that will help with rolling shutter in electronic mode, maybe pick up that uh, mechanical speed, but where they could definitely improve on the speed is, well, the buffer, the internal buffer. So that way we could shoot for longer and that the buffer could clear quicker. And that's really important. Not many of us are gonna be holding down that shutter button for five, 10, 15, or 20 seconds. But there are times where we wanna get that shot and something's fast moving, we will hold it down, spray and pray for maybe a second or two, or we'll pulse it for half a second, wait, pulse it again. And you wanna have a buffer that's gonna clear really quickly. So let's increase the speed and the capacity of the buffer. And that's gonna help in terms of frame rates. The EVF is currently 2.36 million dots, and it's an OLED EVF. But come on, Canon, let's bump it up here. Let's at least give it 3.68 or bring it up to the, well, level of the Canon EOS R5 and give it 5.76 million dots. After all, this is a flagship APS-C camera, not an entry-level full-frame camera. And I think increasing the resolution there, blackout-free, 120 frames per second, giving it all the goodies in the EVF is certainly welcomed. And the LCD, well, the resolution is okay at 1.2 million dots. That's great, but for wildlife photographers, what we really want, especially for those that are gonna be shooting with super telephotos, is give us a four axis LCD like Sony did with the A7R5. Shooting wildlife, this would be a great boon, especially when you've got that super telephoto on, whether it's the 100 to 500, the 200 to 800, where you can bring that LCD out so you're looking down the barrel of the lens to um, just make life a little bit more easy. The Mark I also has IBIS and dual UHS-2 memory card slots, but I would like to see one CF Express Type-B card slot. The R5 does have dual card slots, one of them being a Type-B, and it is a bit of an issue in some situations, but today I can record video all the way up to 4K to both card slots simultaneously. I can shoot 20 frames per second to both card slots simultaneously. So while it's a bit annoying having two different size card slots, there are certain benefits to shooting with CF Express Type B cards and just the speed of getting content off the card. And in video, when I shoot video, I'm actually able to transcode right off the card, not having to transfer it to some other device and transcode it. That's what I really like about CF Express Type B is so the speed. And then of course you leave the UHS-2 card in the camera as your backup in case anything goes wrong. But there is one other thing. There is one other thing that Canon could do for this camera. And it's one of those benefits that doesn't just benefit the R7, but the R10 as well, and the R50. And that's the lens inventory. That's one of the things that's a bit lacking here. Now for birders, you can borrow from the 100 to 500, the 200 to 800, or any of Canon's L series glass for your super telephoto work. And with that 1.6 times crop, boy, you get to punch in a little bit further. And that's terrific. But those other lenses where you're shooting with a primer or other maybe wider zooms where there isn't a whole lot of options. And so Canon could release more lenses and that'd be great as well. But one thing Canon could also do here is release more parfocal or quasi parfocal lenses like those lenses that have the Z in it, as well as open up the mount to third parties like Sigma and Tamron. The APS-C line is where we're really missing an awful lot of primes and zooms and that's one area they could definitely improve upon this camera that the Mark I doesn't have, but it also benefits all the other cameras in the lineup. All in all, I think the R7 Mark I is a pretty solid camera and it would be nice to see an R7 Mark II. But now it's time for a bit of a reality check. Let's take another look at what Canon Rumors actually said. While this is rated as a CR2, it's not a very definitive word. They might release an APS-C camera in 2024, okay. So they might do this. So this is coming from a known source that they might release it. Now, does that mean it could happen in 2025? Does that mean it's actually on the drawing board? Is this something that's pretty close to reality or is it just, well, they're having a committee meeting and deciding what comes out next. They're planning the roadmap. There's one other thing that Canon Rumors said, take a look at this language here. A solid source has let us know that there have been hints about a follow-up to 2022's Canon EOS R7. Hints. So we've got might and we've got hints. And yes, they're from known and solid sources. But, you know, in my line of work, when I'm in a meeting and we're working on things, I'm working with people that are credible, that are, that are 
they're reliable, that they're known and trusted people. And we conjecture, we wonder about what we should do next, what projects we should do, what are the highest priorities for intakes. And we might do this and we might do that. And there's hints of something else. It doesn't mean it's gonna to come to action. I'd love to see a follow-up by Canon Rumors to provide us with a little bit more um, context to this. When they say might, is this something that they've actually said, yes, there's gonna be an R7 Mark II. They just don't know if it's gonna be between 2024 and 2025. Because remember, mid 2022, that would put, well, mid 2024 as the two year mark and three years into 2025. So yeah, I, I don't doubt that there's gonna be a Mark II, but I don't feel that there's a lot of um, confirmation or validation about anything here. And with all the, how shall I say, questionable rumors that have come out over the past year, and I'm not knocking can of rumors here because again, we're, we're, we're getting information from known and solid sources, but it seems to be, well, they're contradicting each other. And we don't know why, whether it's disinformation, whether Ken is trying a new technique to get us confusing and guessing and to leak information that's wrong over here and information that's wrong over here. So we miss what's coming right down the middle. So what might come out and hints of an R7? Well, yeah, um, I, you know, I, I, I would take this definitely with a grain of salt. We don't have any specifications. But I, I certainly think there's room for improvement in the R7 Mark II. And to have a stack sensor, that would be wow. To get rid of that rear control wheel, because when you're working with a camera day in and day out, that's just a terrible control wheel. Give it the one in the Canon EOS R5, spend the extra 10 cents. And of course, with a stack sensor, we get increased dynamic range. We get a better performance in the rolling shutter, as well as electronic modes. And of course, to open up the mount, which I get a lot of people asking me questions, and I said, nothing's changed. Canon Rumor said that by the end of February, we would get some sort of big Sigma announcement on the Canon RF mount. And well, we haven't reached the end of February yet. We're in the middle of February. So I would expect something to come pretty soon if that's to be the case. We haven't heard anything further from any other sources or I can guarantee you I'd have a video out there. And instead of asking me these sorts of questions all the time, subscribe and follow me on Twitter so that way you don't miss my latest videos when I talk about these things, because um, something like that, I'm not gonna fail to update it. I'm not gonna keep that in my back pocket. And if you're interested in purchasing anything I've talked about in this video here, such as the Canon EOS R7, which is on sale for $100 off, the Canon EOS R5, big savings there, as well as a bunch of Canon lenses, then please consider purchasing from my affiliate links down below, these ones right here. I do have them in the description. They, uh, if you use these links, it's not gonna cost you anything more if you're buying from B&H, Adorama, or Amazon.com. But one thing is for sure, I get anywhere from two to 12% back. And that really does help fund this channel to allow me to purchase gear such as the 100 to 500, the 200 to 800, the EOS R5 Mark II, and maybe even the EOS R1, but definitely that 24 to 105 F2.8. And a big thanks to all of you that have used my affiliate links. It means an awful lot to me, and I greatly appreciate it. So it's now Thursday morning, but I wouldn't be surprised if we were gonna get more information coming out over the next couple of weeks. CP Plus is next week, and usually what happens is any major announcements, well, they get teased and released, actually literally released by the manufacturers, and that usually starts as early as Sunday and then follows up on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday before the show actually starts. It's a little bit strange, but that's just how that show works. All the major announcements happen before the show, not at the show. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day, and we'll see you again soon.